Hello there, welcome back, and welcome to part 88 in my build log series of the Trumpeter 1 to 200 scale model of the Titanic. Now, today I am doing all of the ship's rigging, or at least what I should say perhaps is all of the ship's remaining rigging. So I've done all of the forward rigging, I've done the abseiling lines coming down from the top of the funnels, done all of the aft rigging, and of course I've also done the Marconi aerials. So, uh, quite a lot to get through today. Um, this was really fiddly challenging work and there was a lot of sort of problem solving as, as I went on, you know, finding different solutions to different things, largely at the aft section where rigging has to be detachable for, to allow the superstructure to lift on and off, you know. Um, the other thing to say just at the outset is that some of the camera work is obscured by my hand. Um, these are all fine, fiddly, delicate little bits of rigging. Uh, and of course, you've got to get your hands right in there to actually sort of thread the thread the lines through cleats and things like that. So because of that, on a number of occasions, my hands do get in the way. Where that happens, I do try to sort of verbally explain it rather than visually explain it. But um, hopefully the videos are some use anyway. So without any further ado, let's crack on. So for the ship's rigging, uh, I'm going to use this rigging plan, um, which is, I think, pretty much completely complete. Uh, I found it on Tinterweb, so I will um, I'll pop a link uh, to this particular plan in my video's description. But as you can see, it, it calls out all the major points. You've got things like funnel stays, you've got the abseiling wires from the top of the funnel, you've got the whole shebang. Uh, also, quite helpfully, is uh, it breaks it down into different classes of rigging. So you've got the standard, standard rigging, galvanised steel wire rope. You've got the aerial stays, galvanised steel wire rope. Running, running rigging, which is hemp or manila, and then more running, running rigging, which is flexible steel wire. You know, you've got all the different classifications of different types of cable that would have been used to make up the rigging on Titanic. Um, so uh, I'm going to be focusing mainly on what I would describe as the sort of the permanent rigging. You can see there are, there's, there's various bits that sort of drop down um, through things like pulleys and stuff again here. Um, <clears throat> I think owing to the sort of the fragility of this stuff, I don't think I'm going to do that. But what I am going to do is I'm going to do all of the major rigging. So all of the um, galvanized steel wire, um, all of that stuff, of course, the aerial stays, all of the funnel associated rigging, that kind of thing. So uh, yeah, this is a good plan uh, and it gives us a good, a good sort of basis from which to work. Right, the first bit of rigging I'm going to do isn't really rigging at all. It's uh, these ropes that were suspended from the very tops of the funnels, and you can see them all along here. Uh, and you can see, in fact, people suspended off these ropes, repainting the funnels. Now, this is obviously a picture of Olympic, this isn't Titanic, but it must be fairly early in her career because she's only got 16 lifeboats. That middle bulwark section has not yet been cut away to accommodate more lifeboats due to the sinking of Titanic. So it must be early in her career. Anyway, um, there were five sort of islets almost on each side of the funnel, so ten on the top of each funnel. Um, and two of these would have had a line strung from them, uh, one sort of going up and then the other coming back down. Um, <clears throat> and these would allow people to abseil up and down, repainting the funnels. And that sort of makes sense, because if you imagine funnels get quite a lot of wear and tear, they're very exposed right at the top of the ship. Um, but also, you know, they get hot when the smoke comes out, they get cold when smoke doesn't come out, things expand, contract, the wind blows, the salt the sea erodes. Funnels would have needed repainting pretty regularly. Uh, and that's exactly why these lines were there, to facilitate quick and easy painting and touch-ups of the funnels as the ship was sailing along. Bear in mind, you know, funnels were the ship's identity in a way. The colours really symbolise the line that she belonged to. Um, so anyway, I need to add these. Now there is some parts in the KA set for these, uh, and as you can see, here they are there. But I just think they're a bit too big. If you look at them, they look they these will almost end up being the size of a person. Um, and that's just too big. You know, when you look at this photo, they are almost indistinguishable. 
on the three aft funnels. And the only reason you can see them on the forward funnel is because there's a bit of light bouncing off them. I think these would have been far, far smaller. So uh, I'm not going to use the KA stuff, and instead I'm going to have a, a, a route around in my box of photo etch bits to see if I can find some tiny little eyelets, similar to the ones that we used here, um, or rather ones I didn't use here because I used Neil's ones instead. Um, but I'll see if I can find some smaller little eyelets which will be a little bit more subtle. So I'll have a look for those now. Now, fortunately, um, I actually don't have to use the KA parts here because uh, Neil over at Woody's Model Works gave me this set earlier, which is the funnel rigging set. And I've already used most of it. Uh, I already used it to rig my funnels, uh, but also included in it are these sort of eyelets for the rigging higher up on the funnels as well. So all I'm doing is I'm going along each funnel and adding five of these eyelets to each side. Like so. You can just see that one there in place. Lovely. Right, as you can see, I've got one of these in now, and I'll just do the second. What I'm using is this stuff, medium black lycra rigging. Uh, and I've measured out a length here, uh, which is long enough to come up from the deck, through the eyelet, and back down, because these were duplicated lines. So to start with, I'm just gonna go through the eyelet, and because this is like black wire on a black background, it's very difficult to see, so having a nice bright light is quite useful. So that's now through the eyelet, if you can see, two wires. And now I'm going to pull these down onto the deck. I've seen various different photos showing these wires being connected in different places. Some of them have shown them connected up to these railings at the top. Uh, but the most common thing I've seen is the wires wrapped around the funnel stays. Uh, and I'm not quite going to wrap them around, but what I am going to do is I'm going to feed the wires through these eyelets right at the bottom. Uh, and then I'll just glue the whole thing in place and that'll be that. Nice and easy. So we'll start by picking up one of the wires, just plonking it down. Right. through. We'll get the other. That's through as well. It's a case of just pulling them both tight, like so. And then what I'll do is I'll get a blob of glue. In one hand, tweezers in the other. I'll just pull the assembly. You don't need masses of pressure because you're not really bearing any weight here, but just Just enough that the uh, the lines are held taut, uh, and then use some thread scissors to cut the excess away, and there we go. Simple.
Right, I've now done the first two bits of rigging going up the foremast. There we go. As you can see, they lead directly from this corner of the well deck. Now on the actual ship, this rigging was connected to uh, this piece here. But as you probably know, on my model, that's part of the superstructure which lifts off. So if I were to connect it there, I would have to accept that this rigging couldn't be attached permanently, uh, which seems like a bit of an annoying concession, really. Um, so I'm making a slight concession to accuracy by literally a couple of millimetres, and I'm instead connecting this rigging off these two eyelets here on this cross member. And then it goes up as normal. You can see on the other side, that's the solution we've gone up with. And visually, it makes very little difference because the rigging originates from a point which is literally two metres off where it should. Um, but practicality wise, for me, it makes the job so much easier because I can lift off the, the um, superstructure without having to worry about the four, the, uh, the four mast rigging getting in the way. So we'll now do this side on camera. Right, let's start by doing this piece. just cut off a length which is long enough that gives me enough room to get my hands in and work with it and now we'll glue this down now gluing this really doesn't take very much glue at all Here we go. In fact, that's already dried enough to hold this in place. So now it's a case of running this up the mast to the point that it connects. Okay, and I'll just let that dry and I'll trim off the bottom piece. Before that though, I shall take off the superstructure as it's much easier to gain access to these things without it being in the way. Right, I'm just doing the first of the slightly more problematic pieces of rigging. That is the piece from the foremast down onto forward funnel number one that was used. It had sort of various different bits of other rigging sort of slung onto it and so on and so on. Now, of course, the problem for me is that the funnel is on the superstructure. Superstructure needs to come off. Foremast doesn't come off. It's the old problem. So I'm getting round this here. Um, 
by using a hook. Now I'm not sure if I'm able to get this. Ah, there we go, that's fairly good. So what I've done is I've attached a very, very fine cleat onto the funnel and I've put a hook on the end of this rigging line. Uh, and then that goes up onto the foremast where the uh, the actual rigging is glued. I've not glued it in place yet, but here's the end. You can see that's pulling taut. Uh, <clears throat> so what this means is when I remove the superstructure, come along with a pair of pliers, undo the hook, take it off, and then I can remove the superstructure and then reattach the rigging at the end. Now, it's reasonably large, but because everything is black, it's relatively well disguised. Uh, and I'm I'm fairly happy with how this works, actually. It's a um, it's a functional way of achieving what I wanted to achieve. Um, and I mean, I'll probably use some different techniques at the aft, uh, but for this particular application, uh, it's pretty good. And I mean, you know, the moment you get any distance away, really, it looks absolutely fine, you know. So that's another little problem solved. Right, here we go. Here's the hook. And that's it connected up to the funnel. And as you can see, that then gives us our connection Happy days. Right, here we go. That's all of the forward rigging now done. Uh, there was other rigging on the forward mast, um, and that is all in the rigging plan, but most of it is um, labelled as uh, temporary stuff, stuff that would normally have been stowed at sea. So, for example, there was quite a lot of th jibs and things that would have run up along these sections, particularly along the one into the fourth funnel, there was usually, I think, two runners which could be used to sort of hoist stuff up and down. Uh, but this is the permanent rigging all attached. So we've got the two lines at the front going up to the various points on the mast. We've got two other major support lines which run parallel up to the midsection of the mast. We've then got these two lateral stays going up to just above the crow's nest. The two ladders which take you up halfway up the mast uh, they actually meet at the next ladder which takes you up to the uh, masthead light uh, then we've got the connection down onto funnel number four here and then lastly we have the two other connections starting from the well deck aft which go all the way up to the top of the mast so um as with a lot of things on the model, it's a case of doing this slowly, uh, and as you sort of build this up, it starts to look quite busy and hectic. You know, it looks like there's quite a lot of lines there now, um, but just one at a time, uh, and it will sort of, you know, it'll sort itself out. Uh, so looking really good, the front end is now completely done, except perhaps for a morse lamp on the top of the bridge over there. Uh, but now we have the slightly bigger challenge of getting the aft section done. Right, all the foremast wiring is done. The aftermast, however, as we've already discussed, presents a bit more of an issue. I've just uh, blue tacked it in place for the time being. Um, <clears throat> it presents a bit more of an issue because, uh, although some of the connections do go onto the superstructure, we've got two that come from the second class entrance and go up, and we've also got one on either side that comes to here. Uh, however, the vast majority of the connections come onto what is not in the superstructure. So we've got these um, rigging ladders that come up from about here and go up to the mast. We've also got another two wires that go up to varying heights on the mast, and we've got a single connection that goes down onto the poop deck. So uh, there's a few different ideas that I'm going to use uh, for these connections. Right, okay, here is the first of the uh, rigging ladders. And as you can see, at the top we've got a magnet connection, which just pulls out. And at the bottom, all that I've actually done 
is to bend the legs. And what I've done is I've drilled some very, very fine holes in the side. So the idea is that you slot those legs into those minute holes. And then the tension and the magnet at the top holds it in place. And it means that this is now very, very easy to remove when I need to remove the superstructure. So I'm quite happy with how this has worked out, actually. Just to show you the connection to the mast, what I've actually done here is I've drilled a hole through the mast and embedded a magnet in there. And that allows me to connect these two rope ladders on either side. <clears throat> right, apologies, but I'm not really able to film much of this just because it's very, very difficult to get in focus because, of course, the masts and the, the rigging is so fine. Uh, but here's another example of another removable piece of rigging I've added. And as you can see, it's just it's on a magnet and it's just snapped down into place on that deck there, you can see. Just get my uh, tweezers on it. There you go, you see? Comes off, and then clicks back on. And that gives us this piece here. Now, the next piece of rigging that I need to do is the Marconi antenna, or aerial. Um, so this was made up of um, four individual lines, uh, and if we just zoom in a bit on the, uh, the detailed section about the Marconi, here we go, you see. You can see that we've got the actual connection to the mast is here, and then you have a sort of spreading device which breaks the four wires up and spaces them nice and equally. You'll notice that the outer the two wires on one side are actually closer together than the two in the middle. So this is an eight foot gap here. And this is a six foot gap here. Uh, so we'll do our best to recreate that. Um, the other thing which I really want to recreate if I can, um, but which will, just because of physics, be quite challenging, is this quite characteristic droop. You can see that there's a definite sag in the wiring as it goes from one mast to the other. And in fact, I actually think this diagram perhaps doesn't quite show it as pronounced as it would have been because I've seen photos of the real ship and I've seen photos of Olympic where the sag in the Marconi array is actually quite a lot more than it's shown here. Um, and that's, that's, if you think about this as a real ship, you know, the length from here to here, it's not far off the length of the entire Titanic. Uh, so these wires would have had a huge amount of weight to them, and they would, of course, pulled things down. So um, the, the term for this kind of arrangement is called a catenary, when you have a wire suspended between two fixed points. Um, and this is a fairly common thing. You see it, you know, in, in ships, in, in ships rigging. Uh, things like telegraph poles always have this catenary effect. Uh, overhead lines for railways, same thing again. Uh, and it is inevitable that you will get a sag because um, the maths for catenary tells us that no matter, you, you would need infinite tension to pull that cable entirely straight. So of course you can't have infinite tension for a number of reasons. Firstly, because you can't create infinite tension, but also your anchor points would fail uh, or your, your cable would fail. So um, <clears throat> on the real ship, it's very easy to get this sort of loop de loop, uh, this sort of sag, you know. On a model ship, when the cables that I'm going to be using are far, far lighter, um, and they're far more likely to sort of bend a bit with internal stresses and things because they're not weighed down by their own weight so much, uh, this is going to be far harder to get right. Um, and I see a few areas that I think are going to be challenging. Firstly, these drop downs that take the signal to the Marconi room, I would not be at all surprised if they actually provide a bit of up thrust to my catenary. So I wouldn't be at all surprised if my catenary sort of goes like that and then sags down because these cables actually end up giving it a bit of up thrust. Wouldn't be at all surprised by that. And of course, the other thing that I wouldn't be at all surprised by is if I find it very difficult to keep all four lines absolutely parallel to each other. That's going to be massively challenging. 
uh, but we'll see how we go. Um, I've got some ideas, uh, so we'll see how we go. Right, radio antennae. Uh, my soldering iron is just heating up at the moment, so while it does that, I'll just explain what I'm going to be doing here. So this is actually, I'm, I'm using the same approach that Midwest Model Shop used, uh, because if I'm honest, I thought it was a very well thought out and clever way of, of achieving what is really quite a complicated thing. Uh, and I, it, it, since they released their video on that, I haven't been able to come up with anything better. So why not uh, use the same idea? Um, but just, you know, for the sake of being fair, um, most of what I'm doing here is not my original thinking, so to speak. So, all I'm doing, I'm just sellotaping stuff down so that it all stays in line. Uh, as you can see, I've got the actual connection onto the mast, and I've got my cross beam through, and I've got the... Uh, the four actual pieces that come on. And what I'm using here are, um, just as Midwest Models did, uh, I'm using uh, fine guitar strings, E-strings. Uh, and these are plenty long enough, so I'm just doing one side to start with. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solder these up and then I'll offer it up to the model, work out what kind of length I need uh, and go from there. So I'll be hot enough. Yes we are, lovely, okay. That's a really nice connection, actually. Yeah, I'm impressed with my own soldering. That's a first. <laughs> right. I'm just going to carry on with these. So we'll move into time lapse now. Right, here we go, and as you can see I've got the end piece over here, four antenna wires, which are currently too long, and then we move down along the table. As you can see I've taped these all together to the end piece. Now, of course the important thing to note here is that these all have to be spaced correctly, otherwise they will all sag at different heights, which would not look so good. So I've measured up to a distance that I think is correct. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solder these on, but not trim the excess. And that way, if and I'll fit it up to the model. If at that point still not quite right, I can come back, desolder, resolder, make some adjustments and see where we are. But I'm fairly confident that this is a good one. As you can see, too slack, touching the funnels in places. We want a droop, but we don't want that much of a droop. So we go again. Right, I've desoldered those joints using solder wick, uh, and now let's go again. Give me a 
a bit more diesel to it. Right, <clears throat> now we're doing the aerial connections down to the Marconi room. Uh, as you can see, what I've done here is I've connected it with a magnet, which allows me to remove the connection when the superstructure comes off. Now we need to solder the four up wires onto the actual aerial wires themselves. Now, a couple of little things. The inner aerial wires connections were slightly further forward than the, uh, than the outboard aerial wires so we need to do that. Uh, this is also a good opportunity to try to keep the wires in line. As you can see they're not, well maybe you can't see with the camera, they're not bad but equally they're not perfect and I'm not I'm not hoping for perfection really because you know on on a ship on the on the actual Titanic the wires would have been heavy enough that they would pull themselves down and they'd hang quite nicely. Obviously these are not heavy enough to really do that so I'm expecting a little bit of deviation. Um, but these connection wires are a good opportunity to sort of steer the uh, the aerial wires as um, as much as possible. So I am going to try my best to uh, to make these work. The Marconi antennae, and these were slightly problematic, I would say. Um, they weren't really dodgy, but they were just a bit of a challenge. Um, and for the most part, I pretty much use the same methodology as Midwest models. Uh, but once again, the challenge is that they are suspended from the foremast and the aftermast. And the aftermast has to come off because the superstructure has to come off. So how do we manage it? Well, for a start, this isn't actually glued in place. These pieces at the end have simply slotted onto the mast and they're just held there by gravity which is more than acceptable to me. These takedown antennae which go into the Marconi room are secured with a magnet as you can see. Nice and easy, I'll do a close-up of that in just a second. So by that means I can remove the Marconi antennae whenever I wish. Now they're looking a bit bright at the minute, so I think what I'll probably go and do is go outside with these and spray paint them black, just because they do look a little bit shiny. And what I might do is paint them black up to here and then have the actual antennae being shiny because parts of these were metal and parts were hemp covered, covered material. Um, because I think the actual Marconi antennae stopped about here. I think it was only this section that was actually antennae and the rest was just suspending cable. Um, 
So that's how it's been attached to the model. I will just go into a bit of depth on how it's been constructed. Right, here is the assembly installed. Um, and I just want to bring your attention to a, to a few things, really. Um, firstly, you'll notice that I've actually soldered on some spacers. Uh, and they are designed, they're at fairly regular intervals, uh, and they're designed to keep the Marconi array wires spaced at the correct distance apart. Now, the reason that these were necessary is because we're really sort of, we're doing two things here. If I had the array pulled taut between the two masts, I don't think I'd need them, because pulling the wires taut uh, would provide enough tension that they sort of stayed relatively in line with each other anyway. But, as we know from photos, on the real ship, the Marconi array wasn't taut. It had a sag in it, and of course that makes sense, because the masts wouldn't be strong enough to support a line that was fully taut. Equally, a line that's fully taut is far more likely to get snapped if... Um, if, you know, the ship flexes or if the masts flex in particularly heavy winds and stuff. So there was always a degree of um, sag in the array. But of course, at this scale, having these wires sag means that they don't have very much tension on them, which results in them not quite hanging exactly in line with each other. So I was finding they weren't bad, but I was finding that the wires were not really remaining exactly in line. They weren't going completely parallel with each other. And it just it just didn't quite look good enough for me. So I thought, okay, what I'll do is I'll I'll put a spacer in and I'll see how subtle it is. Because if the spacers were too obvious, I um I wouldn't like them. But these are relatively subtle. I've only done, how many have I done? One, two, three, four, five across the whole length. And they're reasonably subtle. I mean, you can, you can see them, but they're not super obvious. And they do space the wires nicely apart. So we end up with that really nice sag, but we keep the wires at a nice distance apart. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, now the next bit is the drop downs onto the actual ship. Originally these were very straight uh, and I wasn't very happy with that because again these sort of had a sag in them. They sort of drooped down and then they sort of come to an anchor point on the ship as you can see here. The final little job that I need to do that I haven't done yet is I need to put a line from there up into this sort of insulator box here. Uh, and that will complete the assembly. Uh, so it was pretty challenging, and I think if you're going to do the same thing that I've done, there's a few things I would recommend. First of which is to... Um, I would certainly recommend strengthening these connections here. I'm trying to get this in focus, and I'm struggling. I'd certainly recommend strengthening these connections here, because it's very fine brass, um, and... I think over time and repeated movements, it is liable to snap. So I would, as you can see, there's a little balls of solder on all of those because I'm just I'm just preemptively strengthening the joint so it doesn't fail later. And similarly, on the other end, I would recommend doing exactly the same thing, just strengthen them up. Uh, you'll notice the other thing that I've done is I've painted half of the wires black, uh, and that is deliberate. Uh, that's deliberate because from about here aft... Uh, the actual antennae stopped and these just became ordinary wires. So there are insulators here. So the actual Marconi wires only went from here all the way forward. Uh, so I've done that as well. Uh, and now I am, I'm pretty happy with it, actually. I think it looks really good. Um, it's one of the more challenging parts of the build, uh, but I'm very happy with how it's turned out. Right, that's the modelling done for today. Uh, the last part of the video, um, I just want to summarise how I retain the ability to remove the superstructure because of course that is the real challenge and that's what's made this rigging so much more complicated than it otherwise would have need to have been. So uh, we'll go into a bit of detail on that now. Right, so um, unfortunately just because of the fact that these things are very difficult to get in focus, um, I haven't been able to show all of the rigging as I would like. Um, but what I'm going to hopefully do now is demonstrate how it works, or at least how I hope it works. So firstly, this piece here, which uh, ends up at the top of the aftermast, 
but starts on the poop deck. So what I've done here, if I get my pliers, is I've used a simple magnetic connection, nice and easy, and it holds that in place very nicely. Now, if we move on, as I've already shown, the, uh, the step ladders are held on by a magnet at the top, and at the bottom they have been hooked, and the hooks just slot in to some very small holes drilled in the side of the model. Like so. They go in very easily. Now these other two connections here, again they're quite hard to uh, to see, but these two connections, you can see them better on the other side, they come from down here and then they go up on the mast, up to various different points on the mast. These, once again, have been connected via magnets. There you go, you see they've come loose. And now they're held tight. The way I've achieved this, and you'll see it better on this side, so as you can see, I've actually drilled straight through the hull. And there's a magnet embedded in the side of the hull. And this simply allows me to attach the other magnet on the other side and then I can attach and reattach my rigging when I want to take the superstructure off for access nice and easy. Now these are the only connections that uh, cause problems on the aft of the model. It's just this one here, these two on one side, these two on the other side and these rig rigging ladders. The rest of the of the um, the wiring onto the mast is all actually part of the superstructure. So you've got this one here, but it's connected to the superstructure. This one again, superstructure. This one, superstructure, and then these two at the other side, both superstructure. Now, one other challenge, which I will go into now. Now, of course, that other challenge is the Marconi antennae, uh, and that comes off quite simply. Lift from one end. Remove a magnet there. Lift from the other end and you're done. And then you can take the superstructure off. To reattach this, I tend to let the magnet find its way home first. Then I do the front section, and then I'm assuming I'm in the way of the camera here, so apologies. But then I do the aft section, and there you go. Clearly, it's not the sort of thing you want to be doing 20 times a day, um, but it is perfectly achievable. Um, and because these are soldered connections, within reason, they are quite easy to repair because I, I, I suspect I suspect at times these probably will fail. They'll, you know, they'll fatigue and they'll they'll fall apart. Um, but because they're soldered, I'm fairly confident that um, these will be fairly repairable throughout the model's life. Right there, you go. That is the rigging complete. Uh, there's a few little bits and bobs I need to sort of neaten up. Um, those magnetic connections need to be painted black in places just to sort of disguise them a bit more of uh, more more effectively. Uh, and where the magnet is embedded in the side of the hull, I need to repaint uh, the shear line stripe and stuff like that. Um, so little touch-up jobs here and there, which will be covered in due course. Um, but that is the ship's rigging complete now, and I'm happy with the results. I've managed to fairly, tr fairly faithfully recreate the ship's rigging while still retaining the functionality I need, i.e. being able to remove the superstructure. So um, I'm happy with that. So, uh, next video will be on the flags of the ship, hopefully coming out fairly soon. Uh, until then, if you've got any questions or comments, do pop them down below, and I'll do my absolute best to get back to you. If you've enjoyed this video, do please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.